For the past 14 years, 44-year-old Ellie James has suffered with an incredibly rare and embarrassing genetic disorder called trimethylaminuria, leaving her smelling of strong fish and rotten egg. Well, Ellie was so paranoid about her smell, she had up to five baths a day, but the condition is incurable and the smell impossible to mask. Well, Ellie joins us now along with uh, Dr. Chris, and welcome. Thank welcome. you very much Hi. indeed for nice to meet you. coming in and talking to us. We should start, really, with the most obvious question, what is it? And why do you get it? Can I go ahead? Yeah. And you, you can correct me. She's a, she's a patient expert. Uh, expert of patient. course. Yeah. Yeah. Try methylamine. Um, in this condition, you're not able to break it down. And you get this in foods, that are high protein foods that are high in coal. So you've got meat, fish, uh, the yolks of eggs, uh, peas, beans, um, um, every, you, you know the whole list because you know, Ellie's following a, a fairly strict diet. Mm. And your body's unable to break that down into transmethylamine oxide, which is odorless. But the transmethylamine, say TMA, is very smelly. And so, of course, that builds up and you secrete this in your sweat in your urine and in your breath and so of course you do smell fishy and uh, offensive to other people mm -hmm. so one percent of the population carry this gene which can be passed on to other family members but that's mm -hmm. not what happened in your case is it no there's two types there's tmau1 which yeah. is the genetic which can be passed on and there's tmau2 which is what i've got which is acquired uh, which can happen through liver damage or damage to the digestive enzymes, one in particular, which is FMO3. And my endocrinologist thinks that that's happened to me because of a sustained course of antibiotics I had really? about 14 years ago, which is quite aggressive. Um, and it is known there is a connection. A, a few other people that I know through the support group that have type 2 seem to have acquired it in the same way. The connection's not really understood. Mm. So, so did, it, did it just happen overnight or did it, did it creep in? No, well, I'm not sure to be honest because I can only smell it when it's really, really bad right. and then I can smell it, but most of the time I can't. Um, but I began to become aware of it over time, over maybe three years. Mm. I began to think my office at work smelt a bit odd. Um, I thought my wardrobe smelled a bit odd. Obviously, it was a smell clinging on my clothes. Yeah. And then I started to get comments from people. So and it's then a shock when you suddenly realised it's you. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, I couldn't believe it. Um, and there was uh, one point um, I thought my cat had brought in a dead mouse or rat, and I spent about two weeks looking for this decomposing body. And that was when it actually dawned on me, oh, my God, it's me. Oh gosh, that and must have been horrible me. for you. And so, yeah. obviously, you're a very hygienic lady. So, for for that first moment of realization, you must have been wondering what on earth was going on, and must have tried to do everything in your power to to get rid of the smell. Oh, a absolutely. Um, and I mean, it, it went on sort of over time, and I, having more showers, more baths. Um, I was uh, wiping my body down with um, with detergent and with disinfectant. You rubbed and yourself red raw. Yeah, you? yeah. I, my skin was peeling and I was in quite a lot of pain. Um, Gosh. But it wasn't helping because I didn't realise it was metabolic. It was internal. It was nothing to do with bacteria on the outside of my skin. It was bacteria um, breaking down food in the wrong way in my body and dealing with it with yourself is one thing but the, the hardest part is dealing with other people's reactions mm. to you yeah. and people were incredibly cruel to you yes it it wasn't great and if I if I still have bad days sometimes you still overhear comments but I don't um, I don't blame anyone for their reaction because it is a social taboo being mm. smelly and it's ignorance really the person mm. sitting next to you on the bus doesn't know it's because you've got a medical condition they mm. think you don't wash. Yeah. yeah. Um, and although the comments aren't helpful and the cruelty isn't helpful, I can. I'm not trying to understand it, but I, or excuse it, but I don't blame. But what I do now, because I have the diagnosis, I know what to do about it. I'm confident now. I will take people aside and say, look, it's a medical condition caused by. I'm doing what I can, but I really can't help it. Well, uh, you've. you've make it sound as if you cope with it beautifully there but it did go through a stage where mm. it really was debilitating mentally yeah. 
yes. um, people in the secret Santa at work giving you soap and someone just mm. spraying perfume through your letterbox. Yeah. I mean, you, there were thoughts of suicide, weren't there? Um, there was a, a period in, in 2009 when I was living by myself where I felt very isolated. I didn't want to get out of bed even to go to work. Um, it was the time when someone posted the body spray through my letterbox um, and it was a day where I'd had an entire bus laughing at me and I just went home and cried and thought, okay, this might be time to yes. shuffle off. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought about my friends and family and how supportive they were being and I thought, it, no, that's not the answer. You, um, you finally managed to, uh, to get a diagnosis. Um, it's heartbreaking when you find out that it's incurable, but it can be alleviated, it can be mm. helped. And I know that diet is a very important yes. thing, and Chris mentioned that, uh, mm. that early on. Um, and I, I would have to say, as we sit here now, um, I can't smell anything at all. No, there is I no, can't. No, no odour whatsoever. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. Well, I gave I you a kiss when you came know. in as well, and it's only human nature to think, mm. I wonder, I wonder, yeah. and I gave you a kiss and, mm. and uh, didn't smell a single oh, thing. thank you for telling me that, because that means the diet must be working. Yes, uh, and I'm right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the, what what is is the diet? diet? Yeah. Um, well, as Dr Chris was saying, choline is the compound that you can't process, and also... Um, the, the compound that trimethylamine is made of is also trimethylamine, um, which is present in, in degrees in mainly in proteins, but um, highest in fish. Trimethylamine is highest in fish, which if you eat a lot of fish, you will have the fish odour. But that's uh, a bit of a misnomer. Many people who have it actually smell like rotten eggs or ammonia mm. rather than fish. Um, and meat, any kinds of meats, animal proteins, Dairy is bad because it's high, um, wheat-fed cows mm. um, produce milk that's very high in TMA, which is trimethylamine. Um, beans, peas, legumes, basically everything that you said, but there are other things like coffee as well is quite bad. Chris, what do you eat? It sounds like you sort of ruled everything out. Chocolate's bad. Um, my diet varies. It, it used to be very strict. It used to just be strawberries, apples, pears, carrots and cucumbers. And you lost an awful lot of weight. Um, I you? went down to seven stone yeah, yeah. Um, and I really wasn't very well physically or mm. mentally. Mm. Um, and I gradually increased certain things into my diet so I put weight back on mm. and I'm physically very healthy. Um, but I don't eat much out of that range. I will have some breads, oat bread seems okay for me, oats seem okay, a little bit of rice, but again grains and whole grains, the things you traditionally <coughs> think yeah. were healthy, mm. um, actually are really bad. So soya beans, which is supposed to be quite healthy, really, really bad. Really? Mm. Yeah. So it's just a case of finding out what works for you, but you're, you're dealing yeah. with it incredibly well. Everyone with it reacts slightly differently to the, the foods. Uh, that yeah, what, what, what treatment are you taking, as um, well as the dietary yeah. control? There's a set protocol, actually, that um, patients with TMA you are given by endocrinologists if they're lucky enough to have one. Um, and the starting point is you, you have a, ironically enough, you have um, a set of quite aggressive antibiotics to clear the, the gut out mm. of the bad bacteria um, because it's the bacteria not breaking the food down in the right way mm. that's part of the problem. Then you have strong probiotics to reintroduce the good bacteria. So all of that mm. stuff about bad bacteria and good bacteria is actually true. Mm. That makes a massive difference. Um, you take riboflavin um, B2, which helps if there's any enzyme function left, it will kickstart that. That really works for me. Mm. You also take chlorophyll, um, which somehow absorbs the toxins in the gut, mm -hmm. and charcoal, yeah. which does the same thing. We, um, we say it's very rare, but we will put all of that on the website. Is anyone who is, oh, is suffering the same sort of thing, then that is a very, very mm. useful list of, of things to have. And thank you so much for coming on thank because you. it's, it's so important to, to talk about these sort of things. That if anyone does come across someone on the bus or someone mm. out in the street like that, then think twice about, uh, mm. about how harmful your comments may be. You have no idea the, the impact it could have on them mm. when they get home, especially if it's something like yeah, that. Yeah, thank, 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 thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, Darren.